Good day to you. Uh, this is teacher Leland Alejandro, and uh, we are going to discuss today proving in uh, geometry. We're going to use some uh, figures and diagrams, statements and reasons, and uh, we shall be able to come up with the answers. All right, let's have uh, the first example. Let's check on the figure. All right, here's the figure, and uh, you, we can see some uh, angles here, adjacent angles. Now from the diagram, the given is there. Okay, given the measure of angle FOG equals the measure of angle HOK. Now we're asked to prove the measure of angle FOH equal to the measure of angle GOK. There. All right, now um, let's start the uh, solution for this. Okay, we're going to use uh, statements and reasons for the solution, okay. So uh, we shall start with the first statement. And uh, usually the solution for this is to start with the data that you have, and this will be the given. Okay, so we can actually have this part there. So we can write the measure of angle FOG equal the measure of angle HOK this angle and this one okay this and this okay all right you can check it out from the diagram and then the the reason for this is just given data so under the reason column you will just have to type given and this is how you will do your proving in a paper and then for the second uh, statement we can uh, make use of the middle angle goh okay and uh, we shall uh, type it there using a reflexive. So this is the symbol. We shall get the symbol angle there. And this will be a GOH. So this is GOH there. And then this is equal to itself. So we will just uh, rewrite this after the equal sign. And here's our statement. The measure of GOH angle is equal to the measure of itself. And you call this reflexive. Reflexive property is the reason. So we write there reflexive property of equality. Okay. So any quantity is equal to itself. So we can say the measure of angle uh, GOH is equal to the measure of the angle GOH. And we shall have the third statement. We can have equals added to equals will always be equal also. So we can uh, write here this first given statement. We can write this like that. And then we shall add the GOH. Uh, we shall just get a copy of that over here. So this will be plus, okay. And then we will add it also here. And let's put it over here in front. There, and then we put a plus like that. So you can see from the given, the angle uh, FOG and the angle HOK, they're supposed to be equal as given. And if we add something equal, which is adding uh, the angle GOH and the GOH to the other side, then we still have this equals. And uh, this will be addition property. This will be the reason for this. Addition uh, property of equality. Oh, let's, let's write addition property there. And uh, for the next statement, statement number four, we can uh, come up with the addition of the adjacent angles. We can actually make sure of FOG and uh, GOH being equal to the FOH, the required FOH. So we can begin with this uh, statement, okay? There. The angle FOG plus the angle GOH must be equal to FOH, okay? FOH. So we will just uh, rewrite this after the equal sign. So this will be equal there. 
So the measure of FOG plus the measure of GOH is equal to the angle FOH. And the reason for this is the uh, addition postulate, addition postulate. So this is called angle addition postulate there. We can also use the other one, okay? We can also use the, the other one, which is the, the angle GOH plus the angle HOK. That is equal to the angle GOK. So for the fifth statement, we can use this statement here. We can make use of this statement there. The measure of GOH plus the measure of HOK is equal to the GOK, okay? The measure of angle GOK. And we can use the symbol over here. There. And we can use the same uh, reason, and this will still be angle addition postulate. Angle addition postulate, there. And at uh, this point, we can now uh, use uh, substitution, okay? Substitution from number three, you can see there measure of FOG plus measure of GOH is equal to measure of GOH plus the measure of HOK. So the left side of the equation in number three can be replaced by the measure of FOH. And then the right side of the equation three can be replaced by GOK, all right? So we can actually write now the proof statement. So we can write this one. It will be the sixth statement there. So you can see it's over here. Measure of FOG plus GOH, it can now be substituted by this uh, term, measure of GOK. And then, uh, now FOH, and then the GOK can be on the other side. So this will now be by uh, substitution property. And we have the proof already. So this is uh, substitution property. There, and we're done with the proof, okay? So this will be for the first uh, example. So again, I'll repeat the substitution. You can see from number three, the, the left side is equivalent to the FOH. So you can simply replace it with this. And then the right side is equal to the GOK. That's why we have the number six, okay? That is by substitution property, and we have now the proof. All right, let's continue with the next. All right, here's the next example. We have uh, something like some uh, angles here. Okay, you can see the diagram. It's a straight line here and uh, one ray going there and another ray going this way. And then we have the labels for the angles. We have angle one here, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five, angle seven, angle six, and angle five. And uh, we shall use the given to reach the proof, okay? So given angle seven and angle six, okay? Angle seven and angle six are congruent, meaning to say they are uh, equal in uh, measure, equal in measure. So angle seven is congruent to angle six. And that is somewhere uh, here. That is over uh, here. Uh, this particular angle, and the other one over here, there. They're supposed to be equal as given. So they are given in the problem. Now we're asked to prove angle one congruent to angle four there. All right, so how are we going to do that? We should have a plan for this, okay? Now, since the given is seven and six, supposed to be equal in measure, they're congruent, then we can start by this given and we can have angle one and angle seven, okay? They are so related by the, the figure, they're called a vertical angle pair. And uh, the other pair on the other side, angle six and angle four are also vertical angle pair. And we know vertical angles 
have equal measures, okay? So we can connect this afterwards by either substitution or transitive property. All right, so we shall begin the solution, okay? We start with the given and then uh, show that this one and seven are vertical angles, also four and six are vertical angles. And you can say afterwards, seven and one are equal, six and four are equal. And then therefore we can have angle one and angle four also equal. And that's the plan in the solution on how to prove the required proof here. All right, so we shall begin with the reasons and statements here. So our first statement, of course, starts with the provided data and it will be this portion here. All right, let's just uh, get this. Okay, so we copy this and then just we write it here. There, angle seven is congruent to angle six. And we may say this is the given statement there. All right, so what do we do next? Angle one and angle seven should be defined as vertical angles. So we may write here angle one, okay? We can write here uh, angle uh, one, okay? And angle seven, we we'll just uh, copy and paste there so we don't have to do so much typing there. Angle one and angle seven, angle one and angle seven, okay? Are vertical angles. There, are vertical angles. And we can uh, write here uh, the reason. Why are they vertical angles? Well, definition of vertical angles, that's the reason. Definition of uh, vertical angles. So what is this definition of vertical angles? Of course, if two angles are vertical, then uh, they are non-adjacent and formed by two intersecting lines. So you can see here, angle one and angle seven, they are non-adjacent, okay? And they are formed by this and this line. Okay, so two intersecting lines you can see in the diagram. So by definition, angle one and angle seven are vertical angles because they are not adjacent and they are formed by uh, two uh, intersecting lines. All right, so that will be it. And that's the definition that uh, we have for vertical angles. We can also use the angle six and angle four. Okay, the, the angle uh, six and angle four. So we can uh, use this in the next line. We shall uh, use here uh, angle six. Let's just uh, copy and paste there. That's angle six and angle four. And then we'll pick the angle four over here. There. And angle six and angle four are vertical angles also. And we can use the same line of reasoning, okay? Definition of uh, vertical angles there, vertical angles. Okay, so we know now angle six and uh, angle four are vertical angles. Now, we can now uh, connect this, okay? Since they have uh, equal uh, measures, we can now say angle one and angle seven are congruent, okay? We can write it here. And this will be like, uh, just copy this to here, then put it in the next line and replace it with the congruent uh, symbol. So this will be now replaced by the congruent symbol. And we will write it there. There, angle one and uh, angle seven, they are congruent, okay? And the reason for this, okay, vertical angles, if two angles are vertical, they are congruent, okay? So that's the theorem for uh, vertical angles. If two angles are uh, vertical angles, then they are congruent. That means they have equal measures, okay? So the reason you can use here is vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent there. And we can also use the six and four. We can also use the six and four. There and replace this with the uh, congruent symbol. Uh, 
replace this with the congruent symbol. There, okay. So we have angle six congruent with uh, angle four and the same line of reasoning, vertical angles are congruent because they are vertical angle pair. So angle six and angle, angle four pair. All right, so we shall uh, move this. Let's put this uh, downwards. Okay, let me just uh, clear my writings there. Let me just clear this and put this downwards, all of this. So we will have more uh, spaces. Okay, and then we move it downwards. Okay, there, okay, all right. So we're now doing uh, number six. Angle six is congruent to angle four. And that will be uh, the same line of uh, reasoning. And this will be, all right, that was, that was our last statement. Okay, so we're going to continue with the, the next statement that uh, we need. Okay, we can now connect uh, seven and four, okay? We can now connect seven and four. Angle seven is congruent to angle six also. Uh, angle six is congruent to angle four. Therefore, by transitive property, we can have uh, angle seven is congruent to angle four, and we can write it there. So we can put here uh, angle seven, and then this is congruent to uh, angle uh, four. There, okay? All right, how did you get that? That's from number one, Seven is congruent to six from number five, angle six is congruent to four. Therefore, we have angle seven congruent to angle four, transitive property of equality, okay? If you still remember, if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C, and that's what we have here, okay? All right, so if seven is congruent to six, and from number five, if six is congruent to four, then we have angle seven is congruent to angle four. And our reason here is transitive property of equality. So we can write here uh, transitive property there. That will be for uh, our number six uh, statement. All right, what else do we have? We're after one and four, okay? We're after one and four. Now we can use number four here. Number four statement. We have here angle one in number four statement. We have angle one is congruent to seven. And for number six, angle seven is congruent to four. Therefore, by transitive property again, we can write angle one congruent to four. Okay, angle one is congruent to uh, angle four. There, and this is by way of transitive property of equality again. So we can just write it over here. There, and uh, we're done, okay? That will be for uh, this particular uh, problem, all right? So first we started with the given. If you're going to analyze it back, all right? The given is angle seven congruent with six. And that's the given. And we're asked to prove angle one congruent to angle four. So in our second statement, we have the declaration of angle one and angle seven are vertical angles, because we can see in the diagram, they are formed by two intersecting lines and it satisfies the definition of vertical angle pair. So therefore one and seven are vertical angles and that is by definition of vertical angles. And for number three uh, statement, we wrote angle six and angle four are also vertical angles. So you can see it for, from the diagram, angle six and angle four. Uh, angle four is formed by two intersecting lines and they are non-adjacent. And then we have a theorem that uh, states that all vertical angles or a vertical angle pair have equal measures. So we have vertical angles are congruent and that goes to angle one and seven also that goes to angle six and four. And so we can write there, angle six and uh, four also vertical angles are congruent. 
And then we can now make use of the previous statements to have number six, okay? And so we were able to obtain number six from number five statement and number one statement. We have seven is congruent to six and uh, six is congruent to four. Therefore, we can connect seven and four. And that's why we have number six statement. Angle seven, congruent angle four. And then from, uh, from here, uh, we actually use uh, statement four and statement six. So from number four, angle one is congruent to seven and angle seven is congruent to angle four, then we can connect one and four. That's how we obtain the proof. And we have for the last statement, angle one is congruent to angle four. And that is the required uh, final statement. That's the proof. So we are done with uh, this and uh, that's it. We, we should be able to learn from uh, these two diagrams how to prove uh, in geometry. And uh, what you need here to, to learn are actually the, the definitions and uh, theorems about these figures, okay? So if you need to do uh, proving, you should be able to uh, make use of those uh, postulates, theorems, and definitions. So this will be all for now. And then try to learn how to do this uh, two column proving with the statements and reasons. I hope you can do uh, yours by, uh, by uh, reading your definitions and theorems to do some uh, geometry problems proving. Okay, class, so thanks for watching. I hope you learned from this. And I'll see you later for uh, another lessons. Bye-bye.